Blanc Quebec Law will be bringing forward an amendment that ensures that the jurisdiction that the motion itself applies to the jurisdiction under the Parliament of Canada itself and I welcome that amendment in fact that was certainly the intent of the motion when I drafted it so I, was, I certainly welcome that amendment and I would certainly support it in the House it is my intention that obviously we work with the provinces who have the primary responsibility in terms of delivering health care to the citizens of Canada. Comments, the Honourable Member for York Southwestern. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker. And uh, Madam Speaker, I thank the member uh, for bringing this forward. And uh, he is so right uh, that Alzheimer's uh, and early dementia is just uh, touching the lives of so many in our in our communities. And uh, he had made uh, mention of the uh, Alzheimer's Society's uh, report, Rising Tide. And um, in that report, as I recall, uh, there is an emphasis with respect to what nonprofit groups and what caregivers can provide outside of the institutional environment. And we all know, Madam Speaker, that there is a point where institutional care is going to be a part of the uh, total delivery, uh, care delivery system. But also that, that uh, incentive that can be given to caregivers and nonprofit organizations. Does his uh, bill include an analysis out of rising tide of looking at incentives through our taxation system that would uh, provide uh, the ability for people with dementia to look after, or with uh, Alzheimer's, within the family environment to continue to give care? Is there incentives that they could have uh, assistance in that? Thank you. The Honourable Member for Edmonton, Le Duc. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I want to thank my friend for his question. Uh, the motion is very broad, so it certainly includes that topic within the motion itself. And if I can just point to the, the escalating costs imposed on public health system by the treatment of such conditions, and also in terms of the leading role played by civil organizations such as the Alzheimer's Society of Canada. But I would also point out that uh, the motion is broad enough certainly to include that. And I know, uh, I think the member is absolutely right that more and more people with Alzheimer's, at least in the early stages, are being uh, cared for at home and it is an increasing financial cost, it's an increasing obviously human cost on family members and on friends and that is certainly something that we have to look at. It is certainly something that both of the reports I mentioned from the Alzheimer's Society and from the neurological centers have in fact looked at and are encouraging us to look at further in terms of how we address those human and those financial costs incurred by family members and friends. Question, a uh, very quick question, the Honourable Member for Elmwood, Transcona. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. And uh, the Alzheimer's Society um, suggests uh, a number of ways to slow the uh, number of cases of Alzheimer's and dementia. And one of them is to promote uh, healthier lifestyles, including encouraging people over 65 to increase their physical activity levels. And I wonder if we should be looking at the uh, English medical system to look at the way they pay doctors over there because they pay doctors over there based on the doctors getting patients to live uh, better lifestyles. So for example, if the doctor uh, gets a patient to stop smoking, for example, he gets paid on that basis for that outcome. And uh, so in this case, if we could get doctors to be getting people on uh, healthier lifestyles, pay doctors for that, that they get results, it should help us out. Uh, um, the Honourable Member has 30 seconds to respond. Okay. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker. I want to thank my colleague for the question. It's a big question. I, I have to say, and that is within the gamut of the, of the provincial government, so I, if I delved into that, I would uh, worry about losing the support of the Bloc Quebec on the issue. I think it's a valid public policy debate that should occur within all provinces in terms of whether they ought to do that. But I would just point out, in the Alzheimer Report, Intervention 1, Prevention, Increase in Physical Activity, I would certainly recommend uh, all members look at that within the report, Rising Tide, because it is an excellent case study, and it should, should certainly be encouraged for members, especially for those approaching age 65. Resuming debate, the Honourable Member for Etobicoke North. Madam Speaker, he was 80 years old and they had been married for 60 years. He kept his promise to her, installed a hospital bed in their living room, and for seven years he was her sole caregiver bathing her, feeding her, and carrying her upstairs to the washroom. In another family, she was just 50 years old. Initially, she made 20 mistakes playing cards in an evening. 
Then she showed poor coordination and clumsiness, making a cup of tea. The doctor put it down to stress, despite the fact that her mother was diagnosed at age 50 with Alzheimer's disease. Peripheral vision problems and general confusion meant that she was no longer allowed to drive, overwhelming frustration and fear. Madam Speaker, the brain is the most vital organ in the human body. It makes our heart pump and our lungs breathe. It is the physical structure that makes us human and allows us to experience art, love, poetry, and science. If the brain does not work properly, every aspect of life may be compromised. Madam Speaker, one in three or 10 million Canadians will be affected by a neurological or psychiatric disease, disorder, or injury at some point in their lives. There are no cures for ALS, MS, Alzheimer's, and Parkinson's, and no effective treatments that consistently slow or stop the course of these devastating neurodegenerative diseases. Statistics are neat, tidy, and do not show the reality of those living with these diseases. People like my cousin, who gradually lost the ability to walk, to work, to interact with her family and friends. People across this country who live with MS and who have the courage to battle their disease every day and to take on a new fight, the fight for the liberation treatment. Madam Speaker, these diseases put a significant burden on Canadian families. My 70-year-old aunt is at her daughter's house at 6.30 a.m. to feed her, get her granddaughter off to school, ensure that the daily caregivers come to bathe her daughter, feed her, and at the end of a long day, put her to bed. Madam Speaker, I came to Parliament to fight for neurological disease, to fight to end suffering through more research for treatment, more support for caregivers, more awareness. I was therefore pleased to receive all party support to form a neurological subcommittee and delighted that the leader of our party committed to a national brain strategy to help lessen the social and economic impacts on people affected by brain conditions. Madam Speaker, Alzheimer's disease is an irreversible and progressive brain disorder that slowly destroys memory and thinking skills. Symptoms usually appear after age 60, but many scientists now believe damage to the brain may begin decades earlier. Thankfully, doctors are now able to start treatments earlier, showing the loss of, slowing the loss of brain cells and the progression of debilitating physical and mental impairments. Madam Speaker, 500,000 Canadians have Alzheimer's disease or a related dementia. 71,000 of those are under the age of 65, with women accounting for 72% of all cases. There are currently at least 2.85 million Canadians providing care for a family member with long-term health problems. According to a Health Canada study, 25% of caregivers have had their employment situation affected by their caregiving responsibilities, and about 40% of them face long-term financial pressures as a result. Madam Speaker, this is an important motion, and I thank the Honourable Member for bringing it to the House. We need all members pushing for investments in Alzheimer's disease and related dementias, as we have an aging population, an increased risk of dementia, and rising human and economic costs. I will quote from my April 13, 2010 speech regarding C9, an act to implement certain provisions of the budget. Where is the help now for our seniors in the budget? Where is the investment in our aging population? We have a federal government that has hardly uttered the word health for the last four years. Yet worldwide there is concern that the baby boomers are retiring and entering their high demand period for health care. In Canada there will be 7.5 million people over the age of 65 by 2025. Population aging has tremendous implications for Canada, where most elderly people would not be able to meet more than a small fraction of the cost of health care they incur. The average hospital stay in Canada costs $7,000 and does not take into account emergency or cardiac care. Still quoting, someone in Canada develops dementia every five minutes. 
This will change to one new case every two minutes in 30 years. In 30 years, the prevalence of dementia in Canada will more than double, with the costs increasing tenfold if no changes are made. This means the total cost associated with this mind-robbing disease could reach $153 billion by 2038, up from the $15 billion today. The Alzheimer's Society of Canada suggests four key ways to slow the growth in cases of Alzheimer's and dementia. Promote healthier lifestyles, including encouraging people over age 65 to increase their physical activity levels. Add system navigators to guide families through the complex health care system. Invest in support and education for caregivers. And combine risk reduction strategies to delay the onset of dementia by two years, particularly through the discovery of new treatments. If we could merely slow the onset of dementia by two years for each affected Canadian, we would see a return on investment of 15,000% over a 30-year research effort. One of the biggest challenges we face is therefore how to best prevent and postpone disease and to maintain the health, independence, and mobility of an aging population." End of quote. Madam Speaker, every day, hundreds of thousands of Canadians experience the difficult reality of Alzheimer's disease. Those living with the disease want to be seen, want to be heard, and should never have to face this disease alone. Those caring for a loved one face overwhelming emotional and physical demands and require real supports. We must see the person, not the illness. No one ever wants to be a patient, but rather a vibrant, contributing member of society.